Number 7. Sharon Birchwood Even though they'd gotten divorced in 1989, Graham and Sharon Birchwood remained close and jointly owned a property in Harrods Lane, Ashstead, England. According to her sister, for nearly three decades, Sharon was consistently devoted to her ex, whom she considered her soulmate and loved unconditionally. She'd even made him the sole beneficiary of her will. Due to failed business ventures in Thailand, Birchwood was over $200,000 in debt by 2007. Through the expatriate community, he'd met fellow Brit Paul Crine, a Guinness World Record holder for swimming the longest distance underwater in 24 hours. They became friends and business associates. Crine also owed thousands of dollars and an extensive investigation would later reveal that he was promised over $40,000 by Graham to return to England in early December of 2007 and murder Sharon. As prosecutors would later argue, she would have been an accessible target due to her decline in health, lack of an active social life and the immense trust she had in her ex. Graham calmly called the authorities on December the 7th to report that he'd found his wife murdered at the Harriet's Lane home. He'd secured a strong alibi beforehand. When officers arrived at the property, they found 52-year-old Sharon's clothed body bound at the hands, feet and head. An electrical cord had been wrapped around her neck with a small metal handle used to tighten the bindings. She'd been killed via asphyxiation and there were no signs of abuse or a break-in suggesting she'd been specifically targeted. Hitman Crime was tied to the murder via DNA evidence and the wider murder plot was uncovered. From her death, Graham stood to gain close to $650,000 through a combination of her life insurance and him becoming the sole title holder of the property. The money would have enabled him to clear his debt and start anew, but instead he was sentenced to a minimum of 32 years in prison, while Crime was given a life sentence with a minimum of 28 and a half years served. Number 6. Tina Cantello. In 2018, a British man was sentenced to a minimum of 30 years in prison for the brutal killing of a debt collector in Essex, England. Tina Cantello, aged 49, had gone to the home of Geoffrey Hutton, as she had a number of times before. The former was a debt enforcement officer for Provident Financial and her job involved visiting customers' residents to collect small cash sums. She'd gone to see 38-year-old Hutton on June the 8th as part of a pre-arranged meetup set for 5.30 p.m. Cantello was due home roughly two hours later but never returned and was reported missing by her family. Police officers traced her movements and approximately 24 hours later found her dead body in the bedroom of Hutton's residence in Derby Close, Langdon Hills. Her underwear was wrapped around her ankle and she was unclothed apart from her bra. The woman had been stabbed at least 30 times in the chest and neck with the killing strikes puncturing her lungs as well as the aorta and left ventricle of her heart. Hutton was found drenched in blood at the residence. He told law enforcement that he'd given Cantello the money he owed before an unidentified man had fatally stabbed her in his house and then forced him to self-inflict knife wounds and drink bleach. His version of events was, however, swiftly dismantled, as evidence indicated that he'd killed the debt collector. In the hours that followed, he went out to buy drugs, with a witness describing him as being drenched, like he had stood in the shower with his clothes on. Upon returning home, Hutton reportedly accessed an adult website advertising escort services while Cantello's dead body was still in his home. He was arrested and ultimately sentenced to a minimum of 30 years in prison. Number 5. Lisette Calvero In 2018, Florida woman Lisette Calvero shared with a media outlet how her quest for becoming a social media influencer had brought her to the brink of financial ruin. In 2013, when she was in her early 20s, Calvero had moved to New York City for an internship. The position only offered a travel stipend and Calvero got a part-time job to supplement her income. She gradually started directing all of her paychecks towards building up her Instagram. She eventually got a full-time job as a publicist and moved back to Miami to live with her parents, factors that enabled her to continue chasing the picture-perfect lifestyle. She'd spent hundreds of dollars on clothes and designer items, like a $1,000 Louis Vuitton purse, to ensure that her followers would never see her with the same outfit and accessories. To give off the jet setter allure, she took trips to various destinations including Los Angeles, the Bahamas and Mexico. In 2016, she spent $700 on a round-trip ticket to Austin, Texas to attend the Sire concert. Looking back on her Instagram-related expenses, Calvera reported, I was living a lie and said that she was over $10,000 in debt. In 2016, when given a chance to return to New York 
for a PR job in Manhattan, she decided that she had to take control of her finances. After a period of 18 months and a drastic cutback on her expenses, she managed to clear the debt. Ironically, her subsequent honesty about the difficulties she'd faced in trying to become an influencer was ultimately what increased her follower count and not the illusory lifestyle she'd initially struggled to maintain. Number 4. Eric Mosley on May the 9th of 2021, Nevada man Eric Mosley, aged 31, was found dead in his trailer in North Las Vegas, roughly 30 minutes before the burnt body of his ex-girlfriend was discovered in the back seat of a stolen truck. Before shots had echoed out of the trailer shared by Mosley and his ex, 39-year-old Sandra Cruz Lopez, the former had been seen arguing with Antonio Barry Edwards, aged 24. As reported by local police, the crux of the disagreement had been $800 that Mosley owed the latter for a stolen truck. Barry Edwards shot him multiple times and he was pronounced dead at a local hospital. Then the shooter, along with his girlfriend, Jordan Monaghan, kidnapped Cruz Lopez at gunpoint. They forced her to drive the stolen truck towards Lake Mead. The victim, a mother of seven, was distraught and allegedly brought up that it was Mother's Day which angered Barry Edwards because his mother was dead. He told Monaghan to do it, meaning to execute her, but when she hesitated, Barry Edwards fatally shot Cruz Lopez seven times, including once in the face. Afterwards, as allegedly proposed by Monaghan, they used an accelerant to set the truck on fire. Some of the interviewed witnesses had been aware of debt, while others had seen the couple drive off with the second victim. Both were arrested and faced charges of murder, kidnapping, and arson. Number 3. Florin Sebastian Balan In 2014, a Romanian gambling addict murdered his pregnant wife and children to spare them from being tortured by the loan sharks to whom he'd become heavily indebted. The bodies of Tundi Kerry, aged 36, and her sons were discovered at the family home in Val de Marne, near Paris. Relatives who lived with them had raised the alarm with local authorities after they'd failed to reach the family on the phone. The victim's throats had been slit while Kerry had also suffered injuries to her chest region. Family patriarch Florin Sebastian Berlan, who'd moved them from Romania to France in 2012, was arrested for the triple homicide. 38-year-old Berlan worked as a construction worker and was also addicted to gambling. As reported by a relative, he'd constantly lose and borrow more money before eventually getting involved with dangerous criminals and amassing a debt of over $40,000. They'd threatened to kidnap and torture his wife and children if he couldn't cover what he owed. It's believed that the constant state of terror had gradually degraded Balan's state of mind to the point that he slaughtered his own family to put them beyond the criminal's reach. He and Kerry had been married for 16 years and, as indicated by recent social media posts, and those who knew them didn't seem to have had a troubled relationship. Today's topic was requested by Zero Sama. If you have any other topics you'd like to learn about, subscribe and let us know in the comments section below. Number 2. Alison McBlain In February of 2021, five people were sentenced to more than 78 years in jail in connection to a fatal hit and run carried out over a drug debt of less than $80. As captured by surveillance cameras, Alison McBlain and her companion, Christian Rivers, were struck by a Fiat Punto that had mounted the pavement in Blackburn, Lancashire. 36-year-old McBlain, a mother of one, was impacted with such force that she was thrown over 40 feet sustaining devastating injuries to which she succumbed in a hospital a few days later. Rivers was also left in critical condition but survived and subsequently recovered. It later emerged that the victims had bought illegal substances from a crew of dealers calling themselves Bully Line, to whom they'd reportedly failed to secure payment. The gang consequently sought revenge. Dean Quayam, Joshua Titterington and Caleb Connolly were inside the Fiat Punto which was used as a murder weapon with witness reports claiming that the vehicle had begun to speed up before striking McBlain and 26-year-old Rivers. Connolly, aged 18 at the time, was behind the wheel of the vehicle, but all occupants were reportedly aware and involved in carrying out the retaliatory hit and run. The accused included John Chatwood, a man in his 20s who wasn't inside the car but had played a significant role in planning the attack, and Caris Poynton, a woman paid to inform the others of Rivers and McBlain's whereabouts. All five were handed down life sentences, with individual minimum terms ranging from 13 to 20 years. Number 1. Incident in China 
in early 2020. Law enforcement in China launched an investigation focused on a man who tried to sell his young son online to cover a gambling debt. The suspect, who reportedly lived in the southern Guangdong province, had made the shocking claims on the WeChat social media platform. The footage showed him seemingly playing with the boy before repeatedly asking who wanted him and stating that he was willing to sell him. A media outlet quoted the father as saying, if any of you bosses likes the child, please contact me immediately. The video quickly went viral and caused a public outcry, with some web users stating that they'd report the man to the authorities. His message was characterized a desperate attempt to cover a debt of 20,000 yuan, equivalent to about $3,140, and spare himself and his family the wrath of the loan sharks from whom he'd borrowed money. In a follow-up post, the next day, the man claimed to have realized the gravity of his behavior, begged the public for their forgiveness, and explained his actions by saying, I was troubled by something and in a bad mood. Thanks for watching. Would you rather owe money to a loan shark, knowing they'd hurt but not kill you, or to a bank that would gradually sequester everything you own? Let us know in the comments section below.